Hey guys, and welcome to Leopard Gecko 101 with Pandora's Jar, where we will talk about quite a few things, um, mostly the care and uh, what it takes to own a leopard gecko. Um, and you may be wondering, uh, just a few things. For instance, am I ready for a leopard gecko? Um, what is it going to take for me to own this leopard gecko? Which is why we will be covering their habitat and um, the proper way to set one up for your new friend. Um, the substrates and the types of substrates you can use. Um, also dangerous types of substrates. The feeding and diet of a leopard gecko and what they should and shouldn't be eating on top of beginner mistakes so that you can um, avoid these and just get straight to being a great keeper. So we'll start right away with um, habitat and what you need for your leopard gecko's habitat. And we'll start with two hides for each side of the habitat. You are going to need one for the cool side and one for the warm side, as well as a single heat mat your choice of substrate, two or three dishes, two thermostats, or a point and click instant thermometer. Um, I cannot stress enough how important each one of these objects are for your leopard gecko's safety and happiness. Um, do not skip out on getting any of these and do not even think about getting an animal until you set up your environment and at least have it running properly um, for a day or two. Otherwise, you are risking um, your gecko's health and safety. Um, another thing that I would like to cover is your main tank or tub or container. Uh, it should be one foot high, 10 to 20 gallons, with good ventilation and a cover to make sure that your leopard gecko cannot get out or escape. Which brings us over to what substrate is best. Um, I have never had a problem with Eco Earth or paper towel, um, or both. Sometimes a variation of the two of them um, really gives diversity to the leopard gecko. However, I've noticed that a lot of my geckos prefer a natural environment, uh, and so I typically stick with Eco Earth. My main concern, though, is what substrate is worse? We'll start with listing them off. So we have reptile carpet, any variation of sand, moss or sphagnum moss, nothing or wood. Reptile carpets can rip out the, the nails of your leopard gecko. And sand, moss, or sphagnum moss can actually impact your gecko. Nothing at all can actually cause your leopard gecko to um, burn their stomach. And it's just really not an ideal environment. Um, and as for wood, uh, you can have some wood in the environment, but you definitely don't want to use it as a substrate. It is not a normal substrate for a leopard gecko. The closest thing you can probably get to their natural environment is Eco Earth. Um, despite to the contrary of belief, um, leopard geckos do not live in deserts. They actually live in a uh, greenish type land uh, with rocky caves and such, which is where they will typically go. Um, so really, paper towel or eco earth is much better. You don't want to do any of the other substrates I've listed um, as it can cause harm and health problems for your animal. Which is why I come back to the topic of hides. Um, hides are very much like caves, caves, hides, they're the same thing. Um, leopard geckos are nocturnal creatures and they actually spend most of their lives in these um, hides or caves, if you will. So it's very important to keep um, two hides at least for your gecko to hide in. Which brings me back to actually temperature. You want your uh, enclosure to have a cool side of 70 degrees to a gradient of a warmer side of 90 degrees. So um, 
I think if you look back in the video, you will remember those thermostats that I mentioned. Yeah, those are extremely important. You're going to want to put those on each side so you can monitor your temperature. So what do leopard geckos eat? How often do I have to feed my gecko? Well, it all depends on the age, actually. Um, a baby, for, which is a zero to six months gecko, uh, can eat every day. Whereas a juvenile, a 6 to 12 month gecko, can eat every other day. And an adult, which is over a year old, can only eat every 3 to 4 days. Otherwise, it might die. Um, we'll get into that in another video eventually. Uh, it's quite an interesting topic. How much am I going to have to feed my gecko? Well, geckos eat mealworms, crickets, dubia nymphs, and superworms as staple diet. So 5 to 10 or 10 to 20 depending on the gecko. All of these feeders can be fed daily uh, for whatever size your gecko is. Um, you will notice that some geckos prefer other feeders over um, other kinds. So here we have Draco who actually will eat anything <laughs> Um, that we put in front of him, whereas we have some other picky geckos that decide otherwise. Which brings me to treats. What about treats for your gecko? Surely an animal must have a treat once in a while. Um, so for leopard geckos, you can feed them waxworms or hornworms, but you only want to feed them every two weeks. Anything more than that is going to be unhealthy. Um, babies also should not get any of these. Uh, once they hit juvenile, you will be able to um, reward them with treats every couple weeks. You're also going to need supplements. This is very important. Um, you're going to need calcium with D3, calcium without D3, a multivitamin powder, and water conditioner. Each and every one of these supplements are extremely important for your leopard gecko's well-being, and I can get into the reasons why in just a moment. Um, you really, really can't skip these, uh, so you might be wondering why do I need supplements? Supplements prevent diseases and keep your animal healthy, and um, without these supplements you are actually risking um, their health and uh, you might end up getting diseases that they can't actually recover from. So you're going to want to be careful and buy those. Now you're probably wondering if you can own more than two geckos or if you can actually give them tank mates and the simple answer to that question is no. Here you can see um, a female leopard gecko, Luna. She is a rescue uh, that we have been rehabilitating. There are a bunch of um, scabs on the top of her head. They are pretty hard to see uh, in this video. But anyway, she went into a shed, as you can see here. Um, and after her shed, you could see a bunch of scarring. So you will be seeing a photo of that in just a moment. Now, she was housed with another female who decided to attack her and starve her out. Um, geckos can be living, cohabitating together, and seem completely fine for weeks, and then suddenly turn around and attack each other viciously. Um, so she was malnourished, weak, and pretty beaten up when we had received her. So despite um, the what the pet store might tell you about females being able to live together. Uh, it is a big no-no. I would just not risk it. You should give them their own enclosures. Um, they don't like company, so it would be pretty cruel. Um, which brings me to shedding as well. Uh, another thing with leopard geckos that you will have to watch is their shedding. As you can see here on her bottom toe, this is Cypress. On her bottom toe there, there is some black. Now, it looked way worse before we had worked on um, giving her some antiseptic and such. You're going to want to make sure that they can shed. Um, which 
Now we can speak about handling. Now that you have your leopard gecko setup done and they're in their home, have been fed, and are ready to explore, you're gonna not want to pick them up unexpectedly. They don't like that. What you're gonna want to do is stick your hand in the tank, let them sniff it and get curious, and let them walk on to your hand um, on their own accord. Uh, if you pick them up and continuously take them out, they're not going to get used to you and they will get um, very, very afraid. Um, as you can see here, Draco, he is our extremely um, social gecko. Uh, we just have to put our hand in quite a few times uh, and readjust it so that he can find an area that he is um, used to or that he feels is better for him. Um, so you're going to want to slowly introduce yourself to them and you're also not going to want to disturb them for the first week or so that you have them as hard as it's going to be. Um, the longer you wait, uh, the better really. Um, because you want to make sure that they are comfortable in the environment they're in. Because if they're not comfortable in their environment and they don't settle in well, they are not going to settle in well to you. Um, so here I will show uh, the update on Luna just so everybody can see um, the difference in appearance uh, from her to other geckos. You can tell that her body is swollen. Um, and she is quite relaxed here. Um, but yeah, you just want to be careful with them when you start. And lastly, we will talk about beginner mistakes. Now this one's huge. Lights. Do not, under any circumstances, put your leopard geckos under any lights. That includes um, lights that they claim that um, they cannot see, like moonlight or anything like that. Let your gecko settle in. I know it's hard, but um, letting your gecko settle in is a huge part to um, owning a gecko. Which brings us to noisy rooms. You do not want um, your gecko in a noisy room, or otherwise they're never going to come out. Um, and feeding during the daytime is also a huge um, beginner mistake because they're nocturnal animals, and I can guarantee you that a leopard gecko is going to be way more happier if you give it a proper um, schedule. So feeding before bed is the best. I hope this video helped you um, figure out whether or not you are ready for a leopard gecko. Um, thank you for watching, and uh, I hope you guys can hit that like button, subscribe, and uh, let me know what you want for future videos.